You know, for people of faith like us, there is nothing better in this world than when God smiles on us, when he shows us his favor. When God grants his favor, the sun shines brighter, the dark times don't seem so hopeless, we become better people, more like the people God created us to be. We feel fulfilled. We have purpose. We can see where we're going because God gives us light to guide us. And, and we can see eternal life up ahead. We can taste it even now. And between here and eternity, God gives us everything we need. Now, that doesn't mean that life becomes easy, right? Life was not easy for Jesus, but he had everything he needed from God. God fills our lives with purpose, with direction. He helps us, and he leads us toward eternal life with him, life as he created life to be. God grants a great reward to his children when we please him and he shows us his favor. He helps us with everything in life, he gives us hope for eternal life. And best of all, he gives us himself. And in him is true life. And so we get to experience life with God when he shows us his favor. And if God rewards us, then we have everything we need. And for Christians, the best way to gain God's favor, to get that glorious reward that is light and hope and help and God's abiding presence, the best way to get God's favor is by obeying Jesus. And so we try to put into practice everything Jesus taught us. For example, what Jesus said in Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16, which we studied a few weeks ago. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And he said, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And so when we live in such a way that we shine our light so that people see our good deeds, we're obeying Jesus. And we're making God look good and people glorify God then. And this is pleasing to our God. And so on our journey through the Sermon on the Mount, which is uh, Jesus' great teaching in Matthew chapters 5 through 7, if we were to stop with just the first section, chapter 5, which we finished last week, and if we didn't continue on to the middle section, chapter 6, we might think that Jesus wants us to go out and advertise everything we do for God. Let's put up billboards about how much money we give to Rod's House and Love, Inc. and other good works that help the poor in our community. Let's get the word out about how we open our building for AA meetings twice a week. Whenever we send some of our brothers and sisters on a mission trip to Honduras, and let's try to get it in the, no the local news, because Jesus said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And so we need to make sure people see all the good things we do. You're laughing, Monique. This doesn't feel right, does it? There's something wrong with that. People who are looking for a church home or searching for God should have a way to find out what kind of church we are and what we do. They need that information, but a, a billboard? Is that really what Jesus had in mind? Pushing to get ourselves in the news? If we get news coverage, great. But pushing to get ourselves in there? Is that what Jesus wanted? Is that what he had in mind when he said, let your light shine before others? So it's always dangerous to take one passage of Scripture out of context and run with it, right? Without also considering other passages of Scripture that might inform how we interpret and apply the first passage. And sure enough, what Jesus teaches in our next section of the Sermon on the Mount informs and guides how we let our light shine before others. It's kind of the other side of that coin, so that we do not let our light shine 
with a billboard so much, but in a way that really does lead people to glorify our Father in heaven. This is what Jesus our Lord taught us from Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. The teaching of Jesus our Lord. The goal in Jesus' teaching here is that we might conduct ourselves in a way that pleases God and wins his favor so that we receive the reward that God longs to give to his people. Uh, Jesus mentioned it three times in verses 4, 6, and 18. He says, Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So how do we live to please God according to Jesus here? Earlier, Jesus said, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. But now, Jesus says in verse 1, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. You will not be pleasing to God. You will not receive his favor or his reward. And then Jesus gives three examples. Three examples from some of the foundational religious practices of the Jews in Jesus' time. And these are still foundational religious practices for us today as Christians. First, he says, when you give to the needy, notice he does not say if, he says when. Jesus expects his followers to help those in need. He will do the same with prayer and with fasting. He just expects us to do it. So he says, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets like the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets. Now, we don't actually have any records of Jews literally announcing their giving with trumpets back in the time of Jesus. So hopefully, hopefully they didn't, and hopefully Jesus is using hyperbole again, that, in, that exaggeration, intentional exaggeration to make a point. And we can relate to his point because we can imagine uh, people, uh, a person being so obsessed with wanting people to see 
them being religious that they would make a big show of helping people in need. Look how much money I'm giving to help the mission. Uh, See what wonderful things our church does for the community. Uh, if, If we did that, if we put it up on a big billboard on 72nd Avenue for everyone to see, what would be our motive? Would it be bringing glory to God or bringing glory to ourselves? Jesus says that's how hypocrites act. A hypocrite, of course, is a person who says one thing but does another. Uh, who claims to have certain beliefs and morals but doesn't live them. In fact, our word hypocrite comes from the Greek word that Jesus uses here in, in, as Luke writes it down in, in the Greek language. The Greek word hypocrites, which originally meant actor, like in a play. It was their, their word for an actor. So it's someone who pretends to be someone they're not. But it came to mean in Jesus' time what it means today. A person who's acting a part that they don't really live. And so if we claim that we're giving for the glory of God, and we we give to help someone, but we make a big show of it because we want people to be impressed with us, aren't we just pretending to be something we're not? People who genuinely are working for the glory of God? Our actions reveal when what we care about the most is impressing people with how religious we are. For people like that, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Archaeologists have found some ancient receipts from the Greco-Roman Empire around this time uh, that use that same phrase, received their reward in full, meaning I've received full payment, nothing else is owed. And so if you practice your righteousness to be seen by others, Jesus says you've received your reward in full. God will give you nothing more than that. You have gotten the attention you wanted. That's your reward. But when we do our giving in secret, God is honored. Jesus says, don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Keep it as quiet as you can. One of the things I love about the church is how often uh, I hear, and I get to hear these stories because I'm in a kind of privileged position, right? I, I hear about gifts given quietly or even anonymously in the church. The congregation might not even know it was ever given. The elders might not even know it was given. It's hard to be a hypocrite in your giving when no one but God is even aware that you gave to help someone out. Or maybe just God and the person who received the gift. It's hard to be a hypocrite about your giving when nobody knows. For people like that, Jesus says, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. God sees and he is pleased and he will reward you. And if God rewards you, you have everything you need. Second, Jesus says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. There will be no more reward for them. They are their own billboard, and the attention that they crave is all the reward that they will get. Jesus' point here is not that we can never pray in public. We have lots of examples of Jesus and his followers praying in public in the Bible. And in fact, uh, right here in Jesus' model prayer in verses 9 to 13 that we just read, where he says, Our Father in heaven, and give us today our daily bread. This was a prayer designed to be prayed openly, publicly. So Jesus is not saying anything against praying publicly, but his point is, don't show off in your prayers. What is the purpose of your prayers after all? Is it to communicate with God or to impress everyone with how well you pray? I think I've used this illustration before a long time ago, so if you you remember it, if it sounds familiar, it might have come from me. Can you imagine eating at a restaurant and uh, 
as, as you're eating your meal, you notice some other people come in, they sit down at a table nearby, and, and about the time they get their food, they bow their heads, and one of them starts to pray much too loudly, God, we thank you for this fine meal, and bless the restaurant staff and the cook, and help our waitress, because she's struggling to work two jobs to feed her kids, and she's a single mom going to school, and, and, and bless her, Lord, and bless our nation, Lord, and on and on and on. And you know, they may think that they're evangelizing the patrons and staff of the restaurant, but really all they're doing is becoming an annoyance, and it makes God look bad. It does not give God a good name. When you're at the restaurant, it's good to pray before a meal. It's fine to pray at a restaurant. But remember what Jesus said about the hypocrites who love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners. Don't be, don't be like them. But when you pray at a restaurant, just bow and pray together quietly. Impress God, not the people at the next table. And keep your prayer brief out of respect for the poor waitress, so she doesn't have to stand there and hold your food, you know, with two hands and, and, and wait for you to say amen, right? She's trying to be polite. Have respect for her. She's busy. And besides, Jesus says God's not impressed with long-winded prayers. There's nothing wrong with a long prayer if it's sincere, but God's not impressed just because there are a lot of words in that prayer. Oh, and by the way, once the waitress has seen you pray and she knows that you're a Christian, make sure you leave a good tip. <laughs> I'm going to skip over verses 7 to 15 for today. We'll look more deeply at, <clears throat> at Jesus' teaching on prayer in those verses next week. But notice what Jesus says in verse 6 is the proper way to pray instead of showing off. He says, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. The, the room here, we think, is the storeroom in the average Jewish house in Palestine at that time because in most houses, most people's houses, unless you were rich, most people's houses only had one room that had a door, and that was the storeroom. You could close it, lock it, keep your stuff safe, but all the other rooms were, were just had open doorways. So this was the most private place in the house. Jesus says, go into the most private place. And pray to God who is unseen. Jesus himself, Luke 5 verse 16, says he often went out into deserted areas to pray alone. He would go out of town into the hills or the desert and go to somewhere where nobody else was and pray. Jesus is urging us to pray to God in private. It's good to pray together publicly too as long as we, don't do, it, as long as we do it with the right attitude and not to show off. But it's really hard to be hypocritical in prayer when your only audience is God. And then Jesus says, then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And if God rewards you, you have everything you need. Third and last, Jesus says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Again, don't show off how spiritual you are, how you suffer so much while you fast and pray to God. If you do, whatever attention people give you will be all the reward you get from God. God knows our motives. He knows our motives better than we do. But when you fast, Jesus says, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. So today we might say, in our, in our climate and in our culture, we don't usually put oil on our heads, but we might say, wash your hair, shave, wash your face. You know, take care of yourself like you normally would. Don't show anyone that anything's wrong. Don't show that you're upset about something and that's why you're fasting or even that you're really hungry. Don't put it up on a billboard. Keep it quiet. Let your fasting be done in secret, just between you and God. About 20 years ago, 
<clears throat> just shortly before Jenny and I moved here, <clears throat> while I was uh, working in Memphis, Tennessee, I, I um, was part of a ministry team, and one of the ministers that, uh, that we worked with, our head minister in that group, he fasted for seven days, for a whole week, he did not eat, and we had no idea, we worked closely together, we saw him every day. I thought he was just a little extra tired that week. He was raising three boys, uh, one a teenager, two preteens. So that's enough to make anybody tired. But actually, he was fasting and praying diligently for, uh, uh, for God's help with a problem in our church. We had some, some folks in our church who hadn't been getting along for months, and we couldn't figure out why. And right around the end of the seven days, after months of us worrying and trying to figure this out, trying to help and failing... After about seven days of fasting, we found out what the problem was. God revealed it. That minister hadn't eaten for a week, and we had no idea. He kept it secret, just between him and God, just like Jesus taught us to do. And God heard his prayer and answered it. And it was a big help to us in our ministry. Jesus says, your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And if God rewards you, then you have everything you need. What do you really want the most? Attention or God? Praise from people or God? Obviously, we're human beings. We need affirmation from other people. We need that. But what is it you want the most? It's so tempting to serve God for reasons that just aren't quite right. I'm going to let my light shine so people will see it. But if I mean by that that people will see me, then there's a problem. A preacher I worked with years ago tells the story of his first sermon. He said he had been a Christian only a year or two, and the church asked him if, if he would mind uh, putting together a lesson and preaching for their Sunday night worship service. And uh, so he, he agreed to do it. Only about 15 people usually came to that service. And so I think the, uh, the church figured that if he messed it all up, it, it wouldn't hurt too badly. He worked for hours to prepare his lesson, and then he, then he preached it. He says it was about, only about 10 minutes long, and he didn't think he'd done a very good job. But when he was done, everyone there came up to him and told him how, 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 what a great lesson it was, how well he had done. And he says he found himself thinking, I could get used to this. And later he became a preacher and he says that he still has to struggle against that thought today. Every time he preaches, you know, that temptation is the message he's sharing for his glory or for God's glory. Jesus taught us to let our light shine so that people will see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. And there are many good deeds that we might do for the Lord, many spiritual things that we would do for him that we couldn't hide if we tried. I mean, they just have to be done in the open. Uh, preaching is one of those. If, if you're only preaching by yourself, it doesn't, you know, the message doesn't go very far. Leading, leading worship, leading our singing has to be done out in, in the open, right? But often what we do for God is, is best done in secret. Give quietly. Don't let anyone know who doesn't need to know. God sees your generosity and he will reward you. Pray privately. Pray with other people too. But don't show off when you pray. Seek God in prayer and be frequent in praying to God by yourself just between you and him. God hears your secret prayers and he will reward you. Fast, without anybody else knowing. Okay, you'll probably have to tell your family if you live with family, because if you don't, they might think you're sick or something. So you might need to tell them, but they can keep it quiet too. You can probably keep it secret with everyone else. God will know and he will reward you. So yes, let your light shine as Jesus taught us. But whenever possible, let it shine in secret. Just between you and God. Or just between you and God and the person you help. If you need more attention than that, God will make sure you get it. Because God always provides 
for his children. Practicing your righteousness in secret is a great way to test your motives and make sure that what you're doing in God's service really is for God and not for your own selfish benefit. It's a good way to check yourself for any hypocrisy. And when our God, who is unseen, looks at our conduct and sees that we're genuinely seeking his glory in our secret prayers, in hidden fasting, in giving done quietly or anonymously, and also in our good deeds done where people can see them, but done in a way that deflects the glory from us and gives it to God. Then our Father, who sees all that we do in public and in secret, smiles on us and will reward us. And when God rewards us, we have everything we need. May God bless you as this week you put into practice what Jesus has taught us. Let's pray together. Our dear God, as we seek you in prayer now at the close of this lesson, we give you thanks for what Jesus taught us and we ask for your blessing of strength and help that we may put it into practice. Lord, see and hear what we do in your service in secret. Lord, we long to walk with you and to honor you and to please you. Thank you for the opportunity to pray to you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to fast when something is troubling us and we need you to hear our prayers, for the opportunity to give to others as you have also given to us. Dear Lord, help us to do these things in a way that truly honors you and not in a way that brings glory to ourselves and not to you. Teach us to be your people, heart and soul, through and through, day in and day out, that we might be pleasing to you, Lord, and find your favor, because we know that when you smile upon us, we have everything we need. Thank you for being a God we can trust in, for being a Father who is good and who loves us. We praise you. We give you thanks today. In Jesus' name, amen.